Becky Quick is live in Omaha for this weekend's Berkshire meeting, and she's joined now by Dairy Queen's CEO, Becky. Hey, Kelly, how are you? It's good to see you. You know, this is one of those great days where you get out and you say, hey, I need a prop. I need something that I can talk about to camera. And guess what? I suckered out of them. I got a deli bar. You don't. <laughs> um, Troy Bader is here. He is the CEO of Dairy Queen. And Troy, this is a day where you got a lot of excitement, a lot of things happening. In fact, earlier today, um, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger stopped by. What did they say to you when they came here? They did. Actually, I have to confess, I wasn't here at the time. I was at a lunch with some of the other <laughs> managers. But I said, he, they said he's here. He actually had a top, an opportunity to talk to some of our executives here. And they talked a lot about what the pandemic meant, what changed during the pandemic, how did technology change, how did the consumer change. So some really good conversations. And again, it shows how connected Warren is with even our business. Yeah, I will wonderful. tell you, uh, Charlie, I, I saw Charlie here while he was talking. Warren had gone into talk to everybody. I was talking to Charlie. He said, wait a second, they're selling dilly bars for a dollar? How can they possibly charge that much? That's way more than they charge at the store, right? And I said, no. How much do, dairy, how much do dilly bars really go well, for? Well, it's going to vary. Our franchisees set their pricing, but it's significantly more than a dollar. They usually need to be north of two dollars. That's what I told him. I told him two, two fifty, something yes. along those lines. And he was shocked just at how far <laughs> prices have come up. But that's really speaking to inflation and a big issue that a lot of people have had yeah. to deal with. It's something we've talked about last year, too. Where, where do things stand from the inflation front? Inflation has been a real challenge over the last couple years. It's no surprise to anybody. We are seeing in our business, it's hitting us in a couple different ways. Obviously, it's hitting us from the cost of goods for our franchisees, the groceries coming in the back door. And how can they price accordingly to offset the inflation that they're experiencing, both in labor costs, but also with the groceries? And that has been a real challenge. And the margins are getting thinner because you can't increase price at the same rate that we've experiencing from an, from an inflation standpoint. The other piece that's hitting us is on the new restaurant development costs, costs of equipment, you know, costs of construction have significantly increased, and it definitely is putting pressure on that end of the, of the business as well. Is it slowing your expansion plans, or do you just cough it up and pay for the cash? Yeah, I mean, people are, for the most part, taking a long-term view of development, and so we are continuing to move on. We opened about 300 new restaurants last year. We will be north of that number this year. The bulk of our growth is still going to be in our international markets, which isn't new, um, but it, franchisees are pausing, but they're being very strategic and taking uh, taking a long-term view. Tyler Matheson is back in the studio, and he's got a question for you, too. Becky, Tyler? thank you very much. Mr. Bader, I wonder who controls or who sets the prices in your stores? Is it you, corporate, or is it the individual franchisee uh, who takes into account local differences in labor cost, et cetera, et cetera. That's one. And number two, compare the cost of my favorite, a dip-top chocolate cone today, with what it would have been three years ago, the price I would pay. Wow. Great questions. I would say, first of all, on the first one about pricing, we provide pricing recommendations to our franchisees, but they are bit independent business owners, so they ultimately decide what prices they will charge within their particular restaurants. You know, I can't give you the specific increase in terms of, of the, your dipped cone, but first of all, please keep going back to get it. And we have a churro <laughs> dipped cone right now that's awesome. But anyway, I would say when, when we look at pricing overall, over the past couple of years, our pricing is up in the neighborhood of about 11 percent uh, over the past two years so it's a pretty significant increase it's stabilizing now and hopefully as we get some relief now in terms of our commodity costs in particular that those prices hopefully will be able to become much more stable